In most cases, pilling can be accomplished by one person alone. Only with fractious animals will more than one person be needed. The dog or cat can be in the standing, sitting, or even recumbent position for pilling. The dog's mouth is opened by grasping the upper jaw in the interdental space and pulling upward. The forearm can be held over the top of the dog's head, pushing against the top of the head as the upper jaw is pulled up. The pill is held between the thumb and forefinger of the other hand. The third finger may be placed on the incisors of the lower jaw to hold it down while the pill is dropped on the back of the tongue. The mouth should be held shut until the dog has swallowed the pill. For animals who have learned to hold pills in their mouths, only to spit them out later, there are a couple of ways to encourage swallowing. The ventral neck can be massaged while the animal's mouth is held closed, and for resistant cases, the nares can be blown on or even temporarily closed off until the dog swallows. The cat's mouth is open by grasping the upper jaw in the area of the interdental space with the thumb and forefinger. The rest of the fingers can be placed on top of the cat's head, thus forming a triangle and giving extra leverage when opening the jaws. Holding the pill between the thumb and index finger of the other hand, the third finger is used to push the cat's mandible downward. Extending the fingers into the cat's mouth, the pill is quickly dropped on the base of the tongue. The mouth is shut and held closed until the cat swallows. Liquid medication can be administered to standing, sitting, and even recumbent animals. This can generally be done by one person. It is not necessary to open an animal's mouth to get it to take liquid medication. The loose skin of the lips at the corner of the mouth is pulled out. Liquid is squirted from a syringe slowly into the space between the lips and teeth. Liquid should be administered slowly so that the animal has time to swallow. If he holds the liquid in his mouth and tries to spit it out, he can usually be made to swallow by tilting his nose upward slightly. Stomach tubing can be performed on both the awake and anesthetized dog. If the dog is anesthetized, it is wise to have a tracheal tube in place. The animal can be sitting or in sternal recumbency for stomach tube placement. An assistant usually restrains the head, keeping the animal from thrashing around and pulling the tube out. The veterinarian is thus free to pass the tube, assuring its proper placement. In order to keep the mouth open and to prevent the animal from chewing on the tube, a mouth speculum is used. One convenient method is to insert a roll of tape into the mouth and use one inch tape around the muzzle to keep the mouth closed over the roll of tape. The tube should be measured to the level of the stomach or about the 13th rib. A piece of tape is placed on the tube so that when it is placed it will reach the correct distance to the stomach. When inserting the tube, the animal's head should be maintained in a normal position, as hyperextension of the neck makes it difficult for the animal to swallow the tube. KY jelly is applied to the end of the stomach tube, and it is inserted through the speculum slowly. Often one can visualize the animal swallowing as the tube passes the larynx. Once it has been advanced, the neck can be palpated to make sure there are two firm cylindrical structures running through it, the trachea and the stomach tube. The cephalic and saphenous veins are often used for intravenous injections for the purpose of sedation, anesthesia, diagnostics, and medication administration. For cephalic vein injection, the animal is placed in sternal recumbency. The assistant uses one hand to hold the head and neck away from the veterinarian, while the other hand is used to hold off the vein. The animal's forearm is grasped just distal to the elbow, with the thumb over the vein and the forefingers around the arm. The vein is rolled laterally with the thumb and pressure applied to the vein in this position. The veterinarian grasps the paw with one hand as a distal restraint. The vein is palpated proximal to the joining of the cephalic and accessory cephalic veins. The bevel up needle is inserted through the skin, subcutis, and vein wall sequentially. 
Negative pressure is applied to the plunger so that blood will enter the syringe when correct intravenous placement is achieved. The needle should be threaded up the vein before injection is begun. The assistant loosens pressure on the vein just prior to the intravenous injection, but restraint of the elbow area is maintained during the time of injection. The fluid is injected slowly. During and after completion of the injection, aspiration should be done to assure that the needle is still within the vein. After the injection is completed, the needle is withdrawn and the assistant applies gentle pressure to the injection site to prevent hematoma formation. For injection of the lateral saphenous vein, the dog is usually placed in lateral recumbency. Two people may be needed to adequately restrain the animal and hold off the vein. The vein should be held off proximal to the hock and distal to the stifle. The thumb and forefinger should be wrapped around this location with pressure being concentrated on the caudal aspect of the leg. The veterinarian should grasp the hind paw, metatarsal, or hock areas as a distal restraint. The line of the needle should follow the line of the vein as it is advanced to bevel up through skin, subcutis, and into the vein. Gentle negative pressure should be applied to the plunger as the vein is entered to assure correct needle placement. The needle is threaded up the vein before injection is begun. The assistant must release pressure on the vein, but maintain control of the leg at or distal to the stifle. The injection is made slowly. During and at the conclusion of the injection, negative pressure is applied again to assure vein patency. The needle is withdrawn when the injection is completed and the injection site has gentle pressure applied by the assistant to prevent hematoma formation. The medial saphenous vein of the cat is very convenient for intravenous injection. The vein is straight, easily held off, and easily visualized in most cats. The cat is placed in lateral recumbency with the topmost hind leg being lifted out of the way. This will expose the medial aspect of the cat's bottommost leg. The saphenous vein runs the length of the medial thigh. The vein is held off proximally using the side of the hand to apply pressure. The leg is held distally by the veterinarian while the bevel up needle is introduced and threaded up the vein. Negative pressure will assure correct intravenous location by blood backflow into the syringe. Before injection, the assistant releases pressure on the vein, but maintains proximal leg restraint. The injection is made slowly, with a repeat aspiration at the end to assure patency within the vein. The needle is withdrawn, and the injection site is held by the assistant to prevent hematoma formation. During a procedure involving anesthesia, it is often necessary to give animals intravenous injections. As most of the animal's body is covered by drapes, the sublingual vein may be the only accessible vein. It is convenient not only for injections, but also for withdrawal of blood for PCV, total protein, and venous blood gases. The sublingual vein is located on the lateroventral surface of the tongue. It is held off proximally by the assistant. The veterinarian grasps the tongue rostrally and advances the bevel up needle through the mucosa and into the vein. Negative pressure applied to the plunger will assure correct placement of the 22 gauge needle within the vein. Prior to injection, the assistant releases pressure proximally on the vein. The medication is injected slowly. The injection site is held after removal of the needle to prevent hematoma formation. Intramuscular injections are often needed in veterinary medicine for medication and vaccine administration, sedation and anesthesia, and for diagnostic procedures. As smaller gauge needles are less painful for the animal, we generally use 22 gauge needles for dogs and 22 or 25 gauge needles for cats. Intramuscular injections are generally given in the thigh muscles although the lumbar musculature can also be used. When injecting the thigh muscles, it is very desirable to avoid hitting the sciatic nerve. 
the animal should be placed in a standing position. If the right hind leg is to be injected, the veterinarian should use his left thumb to demarcate the division between the semimembranosus and semitendinosus muscle groups medially and the biceps femoris muscle laterally. The biceps femoris muscle should be palpated to locate the thickest area. The injection should be made into this area with a needle and syringe at an angle 90 degrees to the skin. The needle is advanced through the layers sequentially, skin, subcutis, muscle fascia, and muscle body. Prior to injection, negative pressure should be applied to the plunger to assure that the needle is not placed within a vessel. If blood is aspirated, the site should not be used for injection. If no blood is aspirated, then the medication should be injected. The needle is removed from the muscle body immediately after injection is completed. The procedure is essentially the same for the lumbar musculature. Subcutaneous injections are a very important technique in veterinary medicine. They are used for medication administration, vaccination, sedation and anesthesia, and for fluid administration. A cooperative animal can be restrained and injected by one person alone. However, for an uncooperative or fractious animal, an assistant will be needed to steady the head and body. The animal can be standing, sitting, or recumbent. The loose skin over the neck and shoulder area is a good site for injection and fluid administration although most of the skin of the torso can be utilized if necessary. The major preparation for this procedure is to lift the skin into a three-sided tent with three fingers. The wide part of the triangular tent should be used to do the injection. The needle should be inserted into this wide area at a 45 degree angle to the normal location of the skin. The needle should go through the skin and pop into the subcutaneous area. Negative pressure should be applied to assure that the needle is not resting within a vessel. If it is not, then the injection is made and the needle withdrawn. For subcutaneous fluid administration, much the same procedure is followed. The skin is tented and the needle is inserted into the wide part of the triangle tent. The needle, in this case, is attached to a fluid administration set. The animal is held still while the fluids drip into the subcutaneous tissue. The needle is withdrawn and gentle pressure is applied to the site to prevent outward leakage of fluids. The rectum can also be a site of medication administration by way of suppositories. Fluid can be introduced into the colon by an enema as a therapeutic measure or as a cleansing procedure in preparation for diagnostics. The animal is in a standing position for suppository application and for enemas. The assistant restrains the head and neck with one hand, while the other hand is held around the torso of the animal to assure that he remains standing. To insert a suppository, it is grasped by the thumb and forefinger of a gloved hand and inserted into the rectum. When its entrance is almost complete, the lubricated forefinger is used to complete pushing it inward. It is inserted to the depth of the lubricated forefinger. Enema buckets or bags are filled with water in preparation for the enema. The enema hose is measured the approximate distance from the anus to the L2 vertebrae. The hose is marked with tape to show the location of maximum insertion during the procedure. For the enema, the hose is lubricated and inserted slowly into the rectum. It should be advanced to the tape mark only if it goes easily. It should never be forced as colonic perforation is possible. The enema water runs into the animal by gravity. When the enema is completed, the hose is slowly removed. The animal should be placed in an easily cleaned area for 30 to 60 minutes following the enema.